Hey, what's going on everyone? So today's video is going to be a little bit of a different style video than normal. We got our first snowfall today here and it's about 8 to 10 inches and basically I woke up this morning to my mailbox not being where it should be. It was actually knocked over and down the street a little bit. So the plow truck took out my mailbox. The purpose of me making this video today is because I'm going to start my snowblower up that hasn't rained in about two years because I didn't need to use it last year and I want to talk a little bit about um, certain tips and tricks that you guys can use to keep your small engines running over time especially the ones like snow blowers and generators and stuff like that that you don't normally use all that often especially when you have them in storage for a year or two at a time certain things that I do that keeps my engines running it keeps my carburetors from gumming up and hopefully it'll help you guys out if you guys have the same problems that I used to have with the new gasolines and that is your carburetors always needing to be cleaned and rebuilt all right guys so i got my basically it's probably like a 20 or 20 some year old snowblower here that i bought a few years ago and fixed it now uh, one thing that the first thing that you guys want to do when you're putting gas in these things and you're you're not using uh, your small engines for a long time one of the main tips that i could tell you guys and it's been working out really well for me is to find ethanol free fuel to run in your small engines with the gasoline that the newer engines and everything use and most gas stations use now has 10 percent ethanol in it and basically that ethanol uh, attracts moisture and gets it into your fuel which gets into your carburetor and just ends up gumming it up over time if you leave it sitting there for long periods of time if you're using it daily or even weekly you shouldn't have a problem with it but when you're not using these engines for you know months at a time years at a time um, you're going to want to get a good ethanol free fuel and to be able to find that fuel basically there's an app that you can go on it's called pure gas and uh, if you download that app you can go on there and it'll show you all the areas that you that have that uh, recreational fuel it's called rec fuel or uh, a lot of um, marinas sell this type of fuel as well um, for boats so you might want to check out your local marinas uh, they could possibly have it. Now, you will pay a little bit more money for this, this type of fuel, but um, it's, like I said, it's better off in these small engines than putting in regular ethanol fuel that has 10% ethanol in it. And another thing, guys, is uh, even with the ethanol-free fuel, you're going to want want to run some kind of stabilizer in your fuel. A lot of times, um, I switched over to the uh, 360 Marine ethanol treatment and stabilizer from the original stabilizer for one reason is because one of these bottles treats up to 320 gallons and this bottle here only treats up to 80 gallons which is about the same size bottle so you get a lot more for your money even though this one's a little bit more expensive you get a lot more for your money with this one and i believe it works better um, being for marine engines always in wet environments with that moisture and everything in the air so basically no matter what even if you don't get the ethanol free um, gasoline you definitely want to use a good stabilizer in your fuel all the time in your small engines. All right, guys, so I got some gas in it. Let me make sure the gas is turned on over here. Yep. And uh, like I said, this thing hasn't been ran in at least two years because I had to, uh, last time I used it, I broke a shear pin in there. And after I fixed it, we didn't get much snow and we didn't get enough snow last year to even uh, bother with getting this thing out. So hopefully this thing starts up. If not, my theory with the ethanol-free gas and the stabilizer, well, may not be true. One other tip I wanted to tell you guys is at the end of the season, if you don't use these for a long time, you're better off draining all your gas out or shutting your gas off and letting your carburetor run dry. I mean, that's what I've been doing for years. If you guys uh, think that there's a reason why you shouldn't be doing that, please put that in the comments below and let me know why. But I've been having good luck with running the fuel out of the carburetors and sometimes draining the tank if I know I'm not going to use it for a long time. So let's plug this thing in and see if she fires up. All right, stand back, bud.
gonna take a minute to warm it up but not bad for sitting for two years All right guys, so it's going a little bit better now that I actually got out of the area where all my patio was starting to melt and it was really, really heavy snow. It wasn't throwing it too good. I was a little bit disappointed, but then when I got out here in the driveway, I was able to go up into six speed and just plow through it and it threw it pretty good. So I was pretty happy with that. Um, one thing I wanted to show you guys is one thing that I changed on the snowblower was these uh, runners right here uh, i don't know exactly what they're called but there used to be metal ones on here and i have a really nice stamped concrete patio that i didn't want to scratch up so i i bought these wheels here there it's a uh, plastic and then plastic wheels and then these just roll right on the concrete and keeps it from scratching up i have them set down just the hair so that it keeps that bottom plate up a little bit so it doesn't scratch the crap out of my driveway but i just want to show you guys one uh thing if you guys have a snow blower and you're worried about scratching your patio or, co or concrete up these are really nice really nice uh things here for your for your snowblower if i could find them on amazon it's been years since i bought those but i'll put a link below in the description to those if i could find them um different ones would be for different snowblowers i'm sure but uh something to uh check out if you guys are interested but let me know what you guys think uh i think it's doing a pretty good job so right there is about where my mailbox is supposed to be i guess i'm going to try to dig it up dig this post out if it's not too frozen see if i can fix it oh this is going to be fun a garden box that ought to do it Just about got it. Uh, still kind of tight. <sighs> Something to grab onto. See if I can get it out of here. <clears throat> All right. Now I gotta go find a post. Ta-da! Buried treasure. So thank God I didn't cement the last one in 20 years ago. Made it easy to change. It's the only thing that sucks about wintertime up here. Living close to the main road. So anyway guys, I think the snowblower did pretty good. Let me know in the comments below what you guys thought. I thought it did pretty well for a 20 some year old machine. Man, these cars make me nervous. All right guys, so my flag got broke off as well on my mailbox. So I'm gonna use this JB Weld plastic bonder to try to bond it back together. Now, I've had pretty good luck with this in the past. I bought this to fix a massage chair I bought 
It had a air pump with a plastic fitting coming off of it that was broke off. I used this to put it back on and it has been working fine since. So we're just gonna go ahead and scuff this up a little bit, wipe it down, mix that stuff up and see if it works. I figured uh, might as well give it a shot. I already had it. So we'll see how good this stuff works. And if you guys are interested in this, I'll put a link to it in the description below if you guys need any uh, plastic bonnet or anything. But like I said, I've had good luck with that in the past. Not sure how it's gonna turn out today because it's a little bit cold out. Wipe it down with some rubbing alcohol to clean it off. This is just gonna be a quick uh, temporary fix until I get a new mailbox. And pretty much basically also a test to see how good that stuff really does work. <laughs> Like I said, guys, I've used this on a massage chair, and I was actually surprised. I didn't think it was going to hold or work, because there's a decent bit of pressure and air going through that little fitting in it, and it hasn't failed yet. I hope you guys are enjoying this video. If you do, if you are, please uh, give it a like. It really helps my channel out. And like I said, this is just a little bit different than what I normally do here on my videos. So I hope you guys are enjoying it. Get that on there and just go over a little bit here of this crack and hope for the best like i said this is just a temporary fix hopefully until i get a new mailbox all right guys finally got the mailbox put back on just before dark hope you guys enjoyed this video if you'd like to see more like it please let me know down in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys around on the next one thanks for watching